I think it's pretty important to acknowledge that there are kind of big holes in the welfare state, and if you're a woman, they're very, very big. If you have got massive socioeconomic change in your society like we have now with technology, then you have got whole a whole nation, communities, trying to kind of navigate these shifts. So tinkering with a system and increasingly trying to individualise it is not where we're going to. The conversation that didn't happen and hasn't happened and is not happening in this country around welfare is what's it for? Right. What's the intent? Exactly. These days everybody goes and kind of has focus groups and talks to their users, but then, you know, somehow those voices still kind of get put in the great kind of industrial sausage machine and the same thing still comes out at the end. The shift that really needed to happen, in, and I'm cautiously optimistic that it is still happening in, in central government and some little bits of local government, is an ownership by the state of the design of the service as experienced by the citizen. That notion of design and service design being at the heart of whatever comes next and a, a humble notion that you don't know what the answer is, you don't really understand the problem at the start and iterating your way. In the beginning of the Beveridge Report he says this is a time for revolutions not for patching and mending. Okay. That's his beginning yeah. and that's what we should be saying now. Yeah, you know, exactly. This is a revolutionary moment. Uh, technology is changing our society in all the ways that you're talking about and is driving these kind of deep inequalities and we need to think about revolutions again.